Wow. Very special Samsung unboxing today. I've even dressed for the occasion. And a couple of other cool things too. For example, the Galaxy Tab S6. This is Samsung's answer to Apple's top-end iPad Pro, while costing a third less. And from everything I've heard online, this is meant to be the best Android tablet on the planet. But I'll be the judge of that. This is nice packaging. And that is razor thin. I did not expect how slim this thing is. For starters, it already comes with an S Pen in the box. That puts it one step ahead of Apple. The Apple Pencil is an extra $100. And compared to the thin little stylus you get with the Note smartphones, this actually feels like a pen. It also snaps on the back and charges wirelessly, which is amazing, but it doesn't feel hugely secure. Like I could just... Yeah. Anyways, I've just booted it up and the quality of this screen, you can tell this is the kind of tablet that was designed to watch content on. Like the video looks fantastic and audio as well. It's got Dolby Atmos sound coming from all four corners. Number 13 is the new Motorola Razr, a phone that everyone wanted to love. In the general software, it kind of just looks like a Galaxy Note that's had a little bit too much to eat. The software is very phone-like. With one cool feature, if you tap here, you can shoot straight into Samsung Dex mode, their desktop Windows-like OS. To do that on a phone, you'd have to plug it into an external monitor. I will say this, Dex does feel pretty unfinished compared to traditional Windows. Like, as an example, I'm on it now, and if I flick to the normal mode, and then back to Dex again, all my Windows have gone back to their defaults. Right, so a couple of cool Samsung gadgets before we get to the main event, which is this guy. I didn't actually know this until a few weeks ago, but Samsung has their own official dual wireless charging station. But when I saw it online, I couldn't quite understand the price. This is 90 pounds here in the UK. That's over a hundred dollars worth of wireless charger. So let's find out why. So straight up, this is a lot smaller and lighter than I was expecting, but let's plug it in and take it for a spin. There's a fan that sits behind one of the pads blowing air at the bottom of your phone. The reason why is that while you have normal wireless fast charge on this side, if you flick to the other side, you've got faster fast wireless charging 2.0. I mean, that does sound great, fast wireless charging 2.0, but in the end, it caps out at 12 watts, which compared to the 40 watts of power that Xiaomi recently showed off with their wireless charging, well. Anyways, nice product, but definitely falls into that category of things that's a little bit more expensive just because it's an official product. On that note though, I've been meaning to try Samsung's official smart cases for a while now. And I gotta say, I'm yet to try a smart case that I actually think was a smart decision, but we'll see. I should actually point out at this point that the Galaxy S20 Ultra has been my main phone for a few weeks now. And with it, I've been using the official silicon case. It's a nice case, but the issue I've been having is that it's almost a little too grippy for its own good. You know when you have your phone in your pocket and you might have a card or some earbuds also in that pocket? Well, because of how grippy the case is, every time you pull your phone out, it either gets stuck in that pocket, it pulls out the inside of your pocket, or worst case scenario, also brings with it the entire contents of your pocket. So. First up, the Smart LED View Cover. First of all, pretty much 360 degree protection. If you're the kind of person who worries about your phone, this is a peace of mind product. There's actually a slot inside to keep a card, and if you close it, the front is lined with LEDs, which has a couple of features. It can tell you the time, and it can show you notifications. So it works, but the thing I really can't stand about these wallet cases is that when you open it, and when you actually want to use your phone, that is not a comfortable way to do it. All those painstaking decisions made with the design of the phone to make it as palm-friendly as possible, they're out the window the minute you decide to use something like this. I was a little more hopeful for the second one, the Smart Clear View Cover. Instead of fully covering the front of your screen, this kind of interacts with it. So screen on, screen off, and all of a sudden you've got this window of information. It's still got that same comfort problem when trying to use the phone, but I do like the fact that when it's shut, you can still use the screen. And finally, just before the limited edition smartphone, the last thing I've been hearing quite a lot about is this, the Samsung T7 Touch, their new generation solid state external drive. And I know, it's a storage drive. I'm not usually very excited by these either, but the specs on this one are pretty monstrous. absolutely tiny. 
I wasn't expecting that. This is a 500 gigabyte drive. Wow. Wow. Now, USB standards are pretty convoluted, but for those of you who know, this is based on USB 3.2 Gen 2, which gives it theoretically insane bandwidths. And a couple of other final cool things. Samsung rates it as drop resistant up to two meters, which means you'd kind of almost have to throw it to break it. And there's a fingerprint scanner here to encrypt it. I wasn't that convinced by that wireless charger we saw earlier, but this, this I could get behind. Now, welcome to a smartphone worth $2,480. Wow. Wow. This is the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip Tom Brown edition. And for those of you who don't know, Tom Brown is a New York-based fashion brand famous for their formal menswear collection, hence the jacket. I could be wrong, but off the top of my head, I think this might just be the most expensive phone Samsung has ever officially sold themselves. But I almost thought it would be more expensive. See, Tom Brown is a company that doesn't mess around. I had a look on Amazon for some Tom Brown clothing, and it is just extortionate. Do you want a pair of sunglasses? That'll be $300. What about a shirt? $600. And God forbid, if you want a jacket, $2,300. So with that in mind, the phone almost seems like a bargain. It isn't, I should be very clear about that, but you are at least getting a lot of limited edition stuff in here. So let's crack it open. Oof. This is just immaculate, wow. The brand's colors, especially with this product, are white, blue, red, and this gray theme. And they've stuck with it incredibly consistently. So this is a note you have in your hands, not just an iconic smartphone, but a unique collaboration. I guess the idea is that the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip is a fashion focused smartphone as it is. So it kind of makes sense to collab with a fashion brand that pushes it into, I guess, a whole other tier. There are actually two different layers to this unboxing. You've got this stuff as well as this stuff, but we'll start on the top. Let's go here. This is amazing. Each of them even have Tom Brown tape. Tom Brown tape. So this is a Tom Brown edition Galaxy Watch Active 2. So the straps are genuine leather. It's Tom Brown branded, of course. And if we boot it up, a custom Tom Brown watch face. I'm not gonna lie, I don't love it. There's kind of a pencil drawn time on it. Right, box number two. And I believe this is our Galaxy Buds Plus limited edition. Oh, that's nice. That's a matte finish. That's something I always look forward to on tech products. And something that I'm really happy about here is that compared to the custom Star Wars Galaxy Buds, which did have a custom case, but normal buds, in this case, you've got the Tom Brown branding on both, as I suppose you'd expect. This limited edition is literally twice the price of that one. Worth noting though, on the subject of Galaxy Buds Plus, is I've actually been using a pair for quite a few weeks now, and I'm a big fan. Battery, audio, just how seamlessly they connect to your Android phone have all been amazing. With just two issues. First of all, I'm the kind of person who likes using neckband wireless earphones, and the benefit of them is that they're not going anywhere. You have them around your neck, you can't lose them. But the Buds Plus, and just generally true wireless earphones, come in their small slippery case, and in my case, have slid out of my pockets into the seat I'm sitting in. I obviously hope not, but even as someone who's pretty careful with their tech, I feel like it's just a matter of time before I lose these. The other thing is that occasionally, like with every earbud, they come a bit loose in your ears. and that's fine, but the problem comes is when you try to readjust them, the entire thing is a touchpad, which means all the time I was accidentally triggering play, pause, and skip tracks when I didn't really want to. Now, just before that bottom tray, we've got the smartphone, and this is a nice smartphone box. It's a little plain, but I don't remember the last time I've seen red packaging for a device. Come on, Tom Brown. <laughs> smartphone itself and you get a 15 watt travel charger you get a USB-C cable and AKG wired earphones there's no headphone jack but these will plug straight into the USB-C port I'm gonna try and pretend like this isn't what I've been waiting for for the last four weeks oh it feels so smooth that's Tom Brown that's Tom Brown plastic that is wow that was fun and here we go here we go My first impression is the fact that I like the matte finish. It's still got that kind of plain gray color that I wasn't a big fan of with the main S20 series, but it's made better by the fact that it's got these shiny chrome accents that at least adds a flavor of flair. And uh, 
the thing we've all been waiting for. How do I look? <laughs> to be really honest, this feels nice. In no way does it make sense financially, but at the same time, I get it. I can see the appeal of the device. It's not value for money, but it is desirable. We're at a stage where companies can use specs from last year, and an average consumer might not even realize. This is a fashion-focused smartphone endorsed by a serious name in fashion. It looks and feels fantastic in the same way that a nice pair of shoes might, and there is a custom software skin, which really does stretch the definition of minimalism. Okay, so custom wallpapers, custom icons, which I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I don't particularly like them. So the entire thing is redone. Like they have put a lot of attention to detail here, but that's not to say I prefer it. I think that Samsung's own stock icons, stock wallpapers look better. There's also a new keyboard sound here, which they were quite proud of. It's meant to sound like a typewriter. I mean, it's nice, I do like it, but I don't think it's something you couldn't just get with a third-party keyboard. Okay, so there's also a custom Tom Brown application, and I wasn't told at all what it does, so this is new to me. No, surely, surely it's not just a blank screen. What? So we got blinds, okay, the blinds open. I really hope I'm missing something here. Does it do something if you open it? Nope. Right, well, I'm just gonna have to assume that it does do something apart from this. But as far as I can see, this is not a feature worth spending money on. Oh, and the other thing is they've replaced the live wallpaper with a Tom Brown live wallpaper, but it's actually not running at 60 frames per second. It genuinely looks like it's lagging, so not great. Let's take a look at this tray, finally. And that is done well. What Tom Brown lacks in the ability to make an application, they do make up for in packaging. You've got a standard Galaxy Watch strap, which I'm not gonna lie, I prefer. And it does still have the Tom Brown branding on it. And the last thing is a genuine leather case for the phone. See, this feels really well done. This is, yeah, this is an A plus case. This I rate. So putting the whole thing together, is this worth $2,480? Well, okay, software wise, you're not getting anything new that that is at all noteworthy, that's pretty clear. But the hardware is beautiful, the packaging is beautiful, and all this custom limited edition stuff genuinely feels limited edition. So if you are fashion focused and you do have money to spare on something like this without needing to think too practically about how much bang for buck you're getting, there is some merit in this limited edition. Thanks a lot for watching, my name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you in the next one.